All right, so continuing our walk through this information here and just talking about box and whisker plots, uh, go ahead and write this stuff down, the median being the middle value, which we already know. Uh, you need to understand that the first quartile is just the median of the lower half. Again, we're going to talk about some situations that occur here that we need to look out for, and that your third quartile is the median of the upper half. So we're going to talk about what happens in that also. Um, pretty much problem one, we're just going to find the first quartile, median, and third quartile for the data. And it's really not that hard to do. Um, and that's really what's going to set us up for what we are doing. So other than that, what we do is this is already in order. So matching these up one for one, one for one, one for one, one for one. It means my middle number is 11. This is my median. But here's what has to happen. If my actual number is the median, that means that there's not two, but 11 is actually my median. What I do is I take that number now out of the hole running and I find the median of this. 2 goes to 9, 4 goes to 6, which means that my median of this half of information is what I call my first quartile. Again, take your median out. Now you do the median of the upper half. So 12 goes to 25, 13 goes to 23, which means that 21 would be my third quartile. And that's really all you have to do. If it's the easy type of question where the numbers are all nice and this splits everything in half on all four, on all three sections. So other than that, that would be your first quartile, your median, and your third quartile. This is what we would call our minimum number because it's the lowest. It was what we call our maximum number because it's the highest. But I don't think those two are so hard to find in terms of your work. Now what you're going to see on MathXL is that everything won't work that nicely. Uh, some of them will, but not all of them will. So when we go to find the median of this, we got 4 going to 31, 9 to 27, 11 to 23, 15 to 23, and notice now we have two numbers in the middle, which means my median has to be found by, remember, finding the average of those two numbers, which is usually just the middle. So if you're good enough, you know that the middle of 18 and 19 is 18.5, then you can just do it that way. But the bottom line is that your median is 18.5. The difference here is that 18.5 is not one of these numbers, which means we don't actually cover up that part. We just cover up everything below 18.5, which means in this one, 18 is still on the list because 18.5 is my median. Again, if one of those numbers was my median, I would take it out, but because 18.5 is my median, now I look at this. 18 goes with 4, 9 goes with 15. That means that's my first quartile. For my upper half, again, I don't look at, I don't take 19 out because my median is actually 18.5. 19 goes with 31, 23 with 27, which means that this is my third quartile. Again, your minimum number would be 4. Your maximum number would be 31. That's how easy it is. You just have to be careful, again, that when your median is in the middle, that you stop here and you count all these numbers and all these numbers in your split. All right? Problem three again, first quartile, median third, two goes with 24, seven goes with 21, 10 goes with 18. Again, we've got two numbers here in the middle, and of course, 13 and 13 should meet at 13. It only makes sense that the middle of 13 and 13 would be 13. But again, because there are two of them, we do not cover up either one of those, we just stop up to this line. But notice when we do that, we've got 13 going with two, and 7 and 10 now represent two numbers in the middle that we have to find a middle of. So we do the same thing. 7 plus 10 equals divided by 2 equals. And it means that the first quartile is 8.5. All right, same thing here. Covering up just these, 13 goes with 24. 18 and 21 are both in the middle. So now I've got to do 18 plus 21 equals divided by 2 equals. And it tells me that my third quartile is 19.5. So again, you just have to be careful when you use the middle number and when you don't use the middle number. And the only time you use the middle number is when the actual middle number is the median. So going back to the notes that I had here, this is the one where you actually do it because 11 was your actual median, so we covered it up. But in the other two, because the median was in the middle, we did not cover it up. So just keep that in mind as you work on your math Excel today. One more, th another thing for you to write is that a box and whisker plot just has the following shape and it's based on the following information. So I'm going to draw a box and whisker plot for you. And when you do that, what you end up with is the minimum value going here, the maximum value going here, 
this is your first quartile this would be wherever your median is this is wherever your third quartile is and the box is made from those numbers that's why they call it a box and whisker plot because those would be the whiskers coming off of the box but again the box has your first quartile number starting it and your third quartile number ending it with your median number representing the middle and then those whiskers go out to wherever your minimum and maximum numbers are uh, this box portion here represents what we call the interquartile range so that's what you've got to understand whenever you see that if they say what is the interquartile range of um, such and such then you have to represent whatever those numbers are and say it goes from whatever this number is to whatever that number is so what we're going to do now is create a box and whisker plot actually looking ahead we're going to create two look at one word problem and then uh, go from there so creating a box and whisker plot here um, <coughs> excuse me 75 is the smallest 80 looks like 125 excuse me again 126 hold on real quick sorry I had to put you on mute uh, 140 I'm sorry 135 those coughs have me messing up 140 140 let's see 75 yes 80 yes 125 yes 126 yes 135 140, 140, and 350. With that said, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 numbers. First thing you have to do is identify the first quartile, second quartile, median. We've got two middle numbers. 126 plus 135 equals divided by 2 equals, which means my median is 130.5. And again, because my median is not the direct middle, I now look at these numbers. So these lead me to my middle numbers, which are here. 180, or sorry, 80 and 125 gives me a median of 102.5, which is not my median, but it is instead my first quartile of 102.5. And then looking at this half, looks like 140 and 140 which again the middle number for 140 should be 140 just to prove it there you go your minimum number here your maximum number here and what you do now is you create a number line and you make sure your minimum number is there and we have to get up to 350 so what I will do is I will count by 50 so 50 100 150, 200, 250, 300, 350. So that covers everything. Again, notice I have to count by the same amount no matter what, but not to have every number covered. From 50 to 350, I have all these numbers covered. 75, of course, is going to be in between 50 and 350, so that's number is going to go there. First quartile is 102, so I'm going to put that somewhere around where 102 should be. That's your second mark. Your median is at 130.5, 130, that's 125 there, so it'll be somewhere around here. Doesn't have to be perfect, but just in the general area. Third quartile is 140, so this being 150 should be somewhere around here. And your maximum number is 350. And what you will notice here is you take your first quartile to third quartile and draw a box, and then put a whisker going out to your maximum and minimum is that this is where the majority of the information is this is pretty close but there's a number that's way out to the side off to the other side of what that is and again that's what we would call an outlier but that's what a box, box and whisker plot does is it lets you know when there are numbers that are just way outside of there and then that if or where the majority of the numbers occur because again notice that everything is happening in between about 102 to about 140 and then you have some numbers here and some numbers there and that is your box and whisker plot that you would create. All right. Same thing for problem five. Uh, looks like the lowest number here is 303. Yep. Uh, 307. Three eleven. 
314, 314 three times. Looks like there's a 315 and two 316s. Ooh, I messed up and I forgot a 312. So I'll just put that there. Um, so again, 303, 307, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 numbers. Uh, we've still got 321 left. I think that's the last one that I have not gotten to. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, which is good. This being my minimum, this being my maximum. Um, lining these up being careful that I line these up right means that my median is 314 that's a nice match and because that is my median remember I cover it up looking at your other ones we've got here here looks like 311 is my first quartile and covering this up and looking at the other edge looks like 316 is my third quartile so looking at your range, you've got from 303 to 321, which means that I can probably count by one. So 300, 301, 2, 3, 4, 305, 6, 7, 8, 9, 6, 7, 8, 9, 310, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, and 21. So again, I'll highlight these key ones here so we know where the big ones are and everything else is just a counter again however you set up your count is up to you but you just got to make sure it's clear your minimum is 303 one two three there's a line that needs to go here your first quartile is 311 which is here your median is at 314 which is here third quartile at 316 which is here your max at 321 which is over here again first quartile to third quartile create your interquartile range and then you draw whiskers to your minimum and maximum number and that is all alright last thing we're going to look at is how we apply the box and whisker and it's just the questions that you're going to see on your test um, they give you Miami Florida's average monthly rainfall in a box and whisker New Orleans Louisiana's average rainfall in a box and whisker it wants to know who has the smaller interquartile range remember the interquartile range is the actual box of course that's New Orleans is going to have the smallest one. If you want to estimate the third quartile of Miami's rainfall, remember this is minimum, first, median, third. That would be about, I don't know, that's 7.5, about 7.25 inches if we had to estimate that. And then it says estimate the first quartile of New Orleans rainfall. So New Orleans here, minimum, first quartile, remember is here, and to me this is right around five that would work so that's what you're looking at there main thing again is that you understand how to um, determine what all those numbers are so other than that go over to your math excel begin working on this stuff and um, again keeping up with everything if you're not done with everything you should be you should be working a whole hour not messing around at any point other than that good luck and make sure you're asking for help